is the build video of my Hair Hogs Titan RC glider conversion. The Hair Hogs Titan, I bought it from Target for $6.49. It was on clearance. And I decided to cut in some ailerons and an elevator, put in some RC components. So here you can see me measuring for the ailerons. I cut those out. That's an inch and a half in. And you can see where I made the cuts on the ailerons. Uh, once I cut out my inch and a half piece, here I'm still cutting, take those off and then cut at a 45 degree angle in order to make it hingeable. So right there I'm cutting at the 45 degree angle and that should make a nice swivel hinge. and I attach the aileron back on with some white packing tape so it sort of matches the color of the foam. I had to trim a little bit on either end of the aileron so that it could swivel freely without touching the other the other piece of foam. I found that the inch and a half uh, surface is sufficient to control the plane as you'll be able to see in some of my follow-up flight videos. So now I'm just doing the aileron on the other side. It's much easier to do these before attaching the wings to the plane. You can see that I do some tape as well on the underside of the aileron. Uh, that's just a carryover from the way I do my uh, my elevons on my wings. Just adds a little bit of extra strength. Okay, here you can see me doing the elevator, and I don't like the way that I did the elevator in the main build video, so I have a follow-up uh, video at the end of this that'll show you the change I made. You see how I did those cuts angled on the elevator? I wish I had done it straight across. If I had done the cut straight across, um, the hinging would be easier and it would have worked a lot better and I wouldn't have had to eventually replace that piece of the elevator with a piece of Dollar Tree foam board. <clears throat> so for all purposes, you can ignore what I do here with the elevator, which is unfortunate because it took a significant amount of uh, my effort. I spent a significant amount of my time trying to get this elevator to hinge and work properly. The same holds true though. You still need the 45 degree cut for it to be able to hinge downward. One thing I did do on the uh, horizontal surface, the horizontal stabilizer surface, is I put a couple of carbon fiber rods, uh, one on each side, just to add a little bit of rigidity to it. The, this type of foam, it's, it's not quite the same type of foam that I'm used to on my stronger planes like the Hawksky or the Bixler. Um, I, I, I don't know if it's EPS, I'm not sure what it is, but it, it seems to uh, be a slightly less <clears throat> less uh, compacted version of EPO, so so it breaks a little bit easier. It's still you'll you'll be able to see a couple of the videos I've had of uh, after I've added wing spars and other things in. I've been able to uh, to take some rough landings without destroying the plane. So anywhere I thought I needed some extra strength, uh, leading edges, I've, um, I've added some packing tape. So here I'm going to do a wing spar. I'm just uh, lining it up to see whether or not the driveway markers from Home Depot would work. And I, I figured that those would be too large and too heavy. So I ultimately decided to go with some thin carbon fiber. And what I do is I cut a slit across the wing and then just insert the carbon fiber vertically. It's it's thin, uh, a thin wide strip. I don't know if that makes sense to you. It's not it's not like it's square. It's it's 
it's uh, like a thin wide strip. So what this is giving is this will give some rigidity against wing flex, but it's not going to give rigidity against uh, the wings bending backwards. Um, wing flex is what you're really concerned with here. So I, I push that right in and then a thin layer of Gorilla Glue just so that the foam seals back up and a layer of packing tape over top of it to kind of hold the glue in and hold the spar in. And then I do some tape <clears throat> on the leading edge of the wing for a little bit of strength. As far as the wings go, I wouldn't do things any differently if I did this build again. I'm, I'm quite happy with the way this worked out. I got the carbon fiber from Hobby King and I don't remember how much it was. Uh, not very much. But anytime you're, uh, you're ordering something of that size, um, they add in a box, a cardboard box of 379 grams. So just make sure you're going to have a sufficient order to make up for, for having to ship the original 379 grams for the box. So what I did is I ordered enough carbon fiber to last me a year or two, basically, and um, fiberglass rods that I use in, in almost all my builds, one or the other. Yeah, so this is where I'm just using some thin uh, pieces of carbon fiber. Um, these aren't the, uh, aren't the thin, uh, thick pieces. These are just like square very thin square, the very thin round pieces, and I just tape them onto the bottom just for some extra rigidity. If I was doing it again um, and I had cut it off properly and I was putting this in, I probably would indent a little bit into the foam and lay the carbon fiber right into the foam and then, uh, then tape over it, glue and tape over it. This video uh, has been sped up 10 times. Again, this, the elevator, as you're seeing it there, um, uh, the camera just slipped here. I'll, I'll reset it in a few seconds. The elevator, as you saw it there, has changed for the final uh, version that, that actually flies. There we go. Now it's set up again. And now I'm doing a carbon fiber spar or carbon fiber reinforcement uh, just along the fuselage, the length of the fuselage. So the same thing as the wing, I cut a slit and then shoved in one of the long thin pieces of carbon fiber. And then uh, what I did is I put another piece I don't know if it shows it there. Maybe I'll, I'll just follow what, what I'm doing in the video rather than explain. Right now I'm doing the servos. Um, and the way I do these, I originally tried cutting it out and it was too much of a pain. So I don't have a hot wire cutter. So I ended up using my soldering iron. I've got a, it's a very old soldering iron. So I really didn't care if I mucked it up a little bit. And I use it to melt away the foam for where the servos sit. Uh, it required a little bit of cleanup afterwards and there were some fumes so I would recommend doing it in a well ventilated area maybe even wearing a mask while you're doing it um, but it did work very well for fitting in the servos I think uh, this is going to become one of my go-to techniques it's almost worth having another cheap soldering iron just for working with foam like this I actually used that same soldering iron technique for the servos and to cut out the part of the fuselage that I use eventually for the battery. You see here me doing the tail servo, or yeah, the elevator servo, using the same technique with the soldering iron. Just making sure all the surfaces move properly. And now I'm going to do my control rods. And of course you can see the blue light, that's my servo tester. I use that to keep the servos centered while I'm setting them up to make sure I've got things in the right locations. I just use a Z-Pen tool for my control rods. And uh, the control rod material itself, they're, um, 
survey flags from Home Depot or Lowe's. We're about halfway through the vi build video at this point. There you go, you can see it wiggling around. Um, those servos that I'm using, they're HXT 500. Uh, if I was doing it again, I, I used these because I had them um, lying around and I didn't have any nine, nine gram servos. I probably, with a plane this size, would like to use the nine gram servos instead of the, the five gram servos. So the HXT 900s instead of the 500s. But uh, I just used what I had lying around. And a little hot glue just to hold things in place. A couple touch-ups with the soldering iron. We're ready to put that ser the servo in on the other wing. I think I'm already almost ready to start gluing pieces in. So there I see you can see I'm already having problems with the elevator. I'd already had to cut it out again and and try a different type of hinge because the tape hinges weren't working. So I thought I'd use a plastic hinge in the center that that might give me a little bit more movement. Uh, ultimately that failed as well and and I ended up going with a straight straight line across the horizontal stabilizer for my elevator. So it looks, I don't know if I've dry fit that or if I've glued it. If I did glue it, I used Gorilla Glue on the on the wings, glued them in place, and Gorilla Glue to glue the horizontal stabilizer in place. The way I'm taping the top here tells me that maybe I've already put my motor mount in, or there now I'm, I'm making the motor mount right now. You can't see it because of the angle, but there is an L bracket uh, with a motor mount, and that motor mount probably stretches four or five inches above the fuselage um, to allow for a very long prop. Uh, well, not very long, but at least an eight inch prop uh, ultimately that solution failed and I'll show you at the end of the video what I did instead. And here I'm cutting out the portion of the fuselage that I'm going to end up using for the battery and the receiver. And the soldering iron didn't work too badly for this but like I said uh, a well ventilated area would be important for this. It did take time to melt all that foam. It would almost be better if I had a, like a scoop, like a U-shaped hot wire cutter, a thin U-shaped hot wire cutter that I could have just kind of scooped down the length and up and pulled a, a big chunk out. But this eventually got the job done, as you can see.
You can see me testing with a larger battery there, probably a 2200. I found uh, from my first couple flights that this plane seems to fly best with a 1300 milliamp hour three cell. Um, I've also flown it with an 1800 or a 1750, and I'm sure it would fly with a 2200. I, ju I just like it best with the with the smaller battery. Just a, just a little, little 30, 30 second, second segment before I put, I put the planes away. away. I was just, I was just flying, flying the air, Hawks Titan. Titan. Probably the third, third or fourth, fourth success, success time, time flying, flying, it. flying it. And, and I, want I want to, to, uh, uh, want to highlight, highlight one, or one or two spots, spots where, where I've changed, I've changed the, original the original version that you see in the build, build video, video to the one, to the that, one actually that actually flies. flies. So, so here, we here we go. Originally, Originally in the build uh, video, uh, video, I had, I had the pusher, pusher mounted, mounted here, here and coming, and coming up, up and and with a with giant prop, prop on the top. And what happened is when I would accelerate, so even on takeoff, the, 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 thrust the thrust was, was so, so heavy, heavy there that, that it pushed the, push the nose into the ground. The ground. Um, um, I could have probably, probably overcome that by, that by changing, changing the angle, angle uh, moving, uh, moving, it, moving, it, moving it, or, or uh, maybe, uh, maybe using, using a smaller prop. prop. But, but instead, instead, I decided, I decided to go with, with more traditional, traditional which, which I've, I've seen, seen on YouTube, YouTube several times. times. Uh, moving, moving the prop to the back of the plane. And you can see I actually just cut off the bracket, so I'm basically standard using a standard L bracket. I've cut a notch. In the, in the back of the plane, of the plane and, and I shoved the L bracket in there with some Gorilla Glue, and then to, and then to give it some stability, I just put an extra piece of foam in there so, so, so it doesn't bend, bend forward. forward. So that's so what I'm using, using for a prop mount, mount or for a motor, motor mount uh, for, uh, the for the back of the plane. Uh, there's some uh, ugly wires, wires that I'll uh, probably end up cleaning up eventually. The other thing that I changed was originally I had the elevator coming off with the original elevator on an angle. And I, and wish, I, I wish I had just cut it straight, straight across, across because the hinging, the hinging just doesn't, doesn't work, work on the angle. angle. I, tried I tried to do something, to do something fancy, fancy and it didn't, didn't work. So, so uh, if, you're uh, if you're building this, just go straight, straight across, across the elevator and do your hinging, hinging, hinging that, that way. So I ended so up throwing, up throwing the, the original, original <coughs> piece, piece on the back, on the back here, here and just using some Dollar Tree foam board. Straight back with my standard packing tape style hinge. So that's it. Other than that, it's all as the original build video. And this, and thing, this thing flies beautifully, I've flown it on, on both a 1300 milliamp uh, uh, hour battery, battery uh, three uh, cell, and, cell and, and a 1700, and, and it flies, flies fine, I'm sure, I'm sure it would also fly with a 2200. Um, um, I, I think, think though, that, that, that for me, for me it, flies it flies best on a 1300, allows me to do nice, nice low, slow, slow passes. passes, it glides beautifully into landing, and I still get 10 to 15 minutes of flight time. Uh, not, uh, a, not at uh, full uh, throttle, throttle, but most, most flying flying's at half throttle, throttle, and a little, little bit of here and there. And there. So, so that's, that's it. it. Um, originally, originally, I wasn't too impressed with this. I'm going to show, show some of my failure, failure uh, attempts of flying, flying it. But, but now, now it's become one of my, my, my more favorite, more favorite planes. planes. It's up it's there, up there with my Hawk Sky and Force Force Wing Side. Always flying flying the wings. They're exciting to fly. Anyway, anyway, take it take easy, easy and, and, uh, and uh, I'll, I'll add this, add this in, in the end, the end build of the video, video in case anybody, case anybody decides, decides they want to do this conversion for themselves. Mm -hmm. Touch and go with the air hogs tape. <laughs>
<laughs> you maybe should bring it in. You're getting a little saucy. Well, the problem, the problem is I watched planes last night. <laughs> and, uh, you know, if he's able to do it in the ocean, why shouldn't I be able to do it on a field? Just touch the wing down and then keep on flying. Well, the battery's gone anyway. I'm out of battery. I have just enough to bring it back. Tighten, third time's a charm. <laughs>